everybody, my name is Fallon. I am the wedding and event specialist at Manchester Country Club. I am here at one of our favorite local floor shops, Apotheca Flowers, speaking with Alyssa. Um, we are going to just answer some hard hitting questions on wedding flowers. Awesome, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, of course, we love me. you guys. Thank you. Appreciate so, it. first question um, What does the typical process or timeline look like for a wedding couple booking their flowers? So, I feel like that's changed a little bit over the years. We used to not meet the client if it was more than a year out. But I feel like in the past few years, people are booking sooner. Yeah. So um, we're actually booked for quite a few dates already for 2020. Oh, that's so great. if a couple reaches out and they want to book us, and it's a year and a half out, we'll, yeah. we'll say yes. You know, we'll meet with them. Right. We won't necessarily fine tune all the details because so much can change. But we're definitely letting people book even more than a year out. Great. But I'd say the typical timeline is a year out. Um, from there, we'd have a consult. We'd talk together about the process, what their vision is, what they're looking for, and how we can help. And then something that we always offer our couples as we get 60 to 45 days out, we do a free mock-up. So that's essentially an example of their centerpiece. So they're able to see their arrangement, all the flowers that we're using in their palette. And then it gives them a really good idea of what their flowers will look like on their wedding day. Sure, how um, fun. Yeah, it's great because it's less stressful. Because yeah. for me, it was just too much to worry about, you know, showing up on the wedding day and just go like crossing our fingers, yeah. hoping that it was exactly what they wanted. And then the other thing that we do, we allow them to come the day before their wedding and look at their bouquet. Um, and that's another just, it's sort of selfish because again, it just lets me feel really good knowing that we've nailed it and it's what they yeah, want. Yeah, but it's great for the brides too. Yeah. They always want that double check. Yep. So yeah. it's nice. So that's yeah. great. Yeah, great process. Um, and then how are, um, what are some ways that couples can get creative um, when trying to save money or cutting costs um, with flowers? Yeah. I mean, budgets are a reality for everybody. So it doesn't matter if, you know, if you're on the lower end of our minimum or the higher end, it, mm -hmm. uh, there's always a budget. So coming up with creative ways is something that we do on a regular basis, creative ways to use flowers or repurpose them. Um, we always recommend not repurposing from ceremony to cocktail hour because okay. that's cumbersome with guests because they leave the ceremony they go to cocktail hour. Right. But we'll often repurpose things after the ceremony into the reception hall. Um, one thing that we've done is we'll, we'll have vases kind of laid out on the cake table or different areas and bridesmaids can put their bouquets in bouquet vases. Um, we've also taken uh, center pieces from the aisle, like aisle pieces, and yeah. we've repurposed those in different on different accent tables. We don't often repurpose onto actual center pieces. I feel like, feel like it's better. Excuse me. I feel like it's better to have something specific for the centerpiece because yeah. you want that really set and you don't want it to detract from the magic while you're yeah. repurposing things. That's special. That's a main piece and then all yeah. the other pieces can kind of come together from different right. aspects of the wedding. Exactly. That's great. And then what is just some um, advice that you have, some secret advice maybe that people don't typically know or that questions you get a lot that you kind of want to share answers to? I think one of the, the best tips is really to, to not be super tied to one particular flower. And I know that can be really difficult, especially with peonies or anemones or ranunculus. There's something that's really captured your heart. It's hard to not hold on to that thing that you love. Um, but because flowers are perishable, because flowers have seasons, it's a lot better to think of a, an overall palette that you're drawn to yeah. that has colors more so than specific flowers. We, we buy from all over the world. We have really great relationships with our vendors, so we will do everything we can to get a specific thing, but we always recommend that our couples have like a second and a third option just in case. Sometimes we'll do everything to find something from a farm and it'll still get held up in customs yeah. or it'll show up and it won't look you know, top notch like we want it to. Sure. So it's just good to have a second option. Another thing to keep in mind is that often the pictures that we're seeing on Instagram and Pinterest have filters. So sometimes a couple will see a picture that they love and they'll not realize that it has like an amber tone filter yeah, yeah. and the flowers aren't necessarily that color in real life. So I think those so are two things. the expectations a little bit off. Yeah, yeah, they might be different. So that's something that again, when we do the mock-up and they're able to see those flowers in real life, yeah. a lot of those things we're able to overcome through that. Oh, that's great. I think those are two tips that I'd throw out there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alyssa. Um, everybody check out Apotheca Flowers in Goffstown. They're absolutely wonderful um, and one of our favorite preferred vendors. Thank you so much. Thank you.